Hi, and uh, welcome to another Retronaut video. This video is a uh, follow-up on a previous video where we unboxed um, something of a Grail machine for me, an Amiga 1000. Uh, the Amiga 1000 was a machine that I would have really liked to have had back in the day, um, but it was just too expensive for me at the time. I was only um, 15, I think maybe 14 years old when it came out. And uh, yeah, I just didn't have that kind of money. Um, a couple of years later, the Amiga 500 did come out and that was uh, significantly cheaper. Um, but I, I literally had to sell everything to um, get that machine and uh, the rest is history. So in that previous video, we made sure that the machine was working and to do that, we took it apart and we tested the power supply. And I noticed there were a few issues uh, with the machine. So let's have a look at what we're gonna try and do in this video. So firstly, where we're gonna take the machine completely apart. Um, obviously we need to take it uh, to pieces so we can actually get in there and fix uh, the issues. Then I'm gonna take a look at um, a crack which I've noticed on the corner. This has previously been uh, repaired, um, but it was done very badly. It, it's, I would say it's a little bit like a broken bone that's been set incorrectly. Um, yes, it's fixed, but it looks so ugly that uh, it's probably better to actually break it again and try and refix it. So um, I've got a bit of a plan for that and I hope that works. Uh, it's a little bit radical and it's not gonna produce a perfect fix, but um, anyway, we'll give it a try and we'll see how that comes out. Um, the power supply definitely seems to have some corrosion in it and there are other signs on the case of rust. I'm not sure where that's come from. It seems to be quite limited, um, almost like some liquid just dropped onto the case and got inside in certain places or some rust dripped from another machine. It's hard to tell, but uh, yeah, the case is very dirty. The case needs to be cleaned. Um, I may uh, try and sunbright the case because we've got a bit of a... Uh, a heat wave going on here in the UK at the moment, and that means that there are day after day of uh, sunshine, which is unusual because uh, this has been recorded in uh, September. Um, but there is the opportunity to try and sunbright the case. Um, the keyboard uh, is very uh, yellowed, uh, bordering on orange. So that definitely needs to be retrobrighted. So in a previous video, we looked at our uh, system, the Uvenator which is, you know, it's a bit of a joke. It's just a box with some UV lights, but uh, the way that's been set up, I found that I get really good results from it with a little bit of patience. So I'm hoping that we can get the keyboard back close at least to the original color rather than it being, you know, vibrant yellow. Um, and of course we then obviously have to put it all back together again. So uh, we have to go off and do quite a lot of work. Um, let's do that now by starting off by breaking the machine down into its parts. And I'm off, and I look very determined, straight into the floppy disk drive, removing the screws there. I've got my spudgers out, I fix it spudgers to take out the, uh, the power supply connection. And I'm taking some reference photographs before I go any further, which is always a good practice. Out comes the floppy drive. And now I am going to try and liberate the logic board from the case. And uh, I know that I not noticed one of the screws on the right hand side. So at some point I'm gonna realize there's an extra screw. There it goes. And out comes the logic board and it looks fine. Next, we remove the PSU. There are some tabs underneath the case that actually it locks into, which is an unusual design. And I'm just doing a quick inspection of all the different bits of plastic and the case. And uh, I've noticed that there's this really bad crack and I'm, Obviously thinking at this point, what am I gonna do with this crack? I'm trying to remove the glue using a scalpel and uh, this ultimately leads to me uh, deciding that I'm actually gonna take this crack apart and try and do something with it. Uh, you know, glue it back together maybe and uh, uh, put some kind of resinous material in there. So I just wanna show you what's going on here uh, with this broken plastic. What actually happened was the somebody in the past has glued this together and when they did it, they actually did it really badly because this is actually raised. I um, hope you can see that. And that raising actually continued all the way along here and what it meant was by the time you got to the corner here, let me turn this around, um, 
by the time you got to this corner here, where this plastic joined up with a corner, um, it didn't. It didn't at all. And unfortunately, to get this apart, what I've had to do is I've actually literally had to break the glue here um, to try and get this apart. And then I was trying to get it to fit together like this, and I couldn't because there was so much glue in the actual join here um, that it was stopping it actually joining together, which makes sense because that's that's what they did, right? They, they glued it incorrectly. Um, and they left it uh, with a very large gap. Now, when you do that, you lose some material here. Um, you can see there's now a gap there. Um, so what I'm planning to do is I have some Milliput ordered, um, which is a an epoxy modeling clay. Um, it dries super hard. Uh, unfortunately, it's white, it's not gonna be beige, um, but it's actually quite fine. So hopefully what we'll be able to do is uh, fill in the gaps um, and then uh, maybe sand this actually uh, to try and get it back down to a, a nicer finish at the end um, But I'm going to basically fill in all the gaps with really put and then hopefully sand it um, Looking inside the case you can actually see the break a lot better and you can see how extensive it is it runs all the way to here So obviously at some point uh, this machine has been dropped onto its corner um, Luckily, it's a bottom corner. So once this is all back together again, it's really just me being a little bit pedantic and trying to get it to look a bit better um, and pro possibly be a bit stronger as well because the, the previous fix wasn't particularly strong um, as was evidenced by the fact I managed to get it apart. But yeah, you can see it's very difficult to actually get it to sit uh, together nicely anymore. Um, yeah, it's just a pity the way that, you know, it looks like a really clean break and it looks like if they just used a little bit of glue, it would have been fine and if they'd held it in the right position, but they didn't. Um, so if we go around to this part of the case, uh, something else we noticed when we were looking at it was this brown uh, material here, which is quite mysterious. Um, if we look inside the case though, you can see that it's actually not coming from inside the case, it's coming from outside the case. So it looks like it was uh, maybe stored on its end at some point and something dripped onto it. I have no idea what it is, some kind of weird brown material. Um, and down here we also have some rust as well, which is actually coming off the power supply. So um, that's something which I'm thinking about uh, possibly taking apart a little bit more, uh, taking out the actual logic, well, not the logic board, but the um, the board with all the components soldered into, and then just giving it another sanding and then spraying, because there's still some active corrosion on it, and we want to stop that. Um, so this is going to go into the sink right now, and I'm going to give it a clean, um, and then tomorrow uh, I'm going to do the milliputting um, and we'll, I'll show you that once the actual uh, milliput arrives. So let's take it to the sink and give it a good clean first. Okay, so we're going to uh, just wash uh, the case. Uh, nothing rocket science about it, obviously. I'm just going to use some washing up liquid. Other brands uh, will do just as well, I would imagine. I'm just going to slather it on over the case. Uh, do the same thing for everything else. I'll point out to you actually that there's an LED here still in the case. I'm not going to take it out because it should be fine as long as it's dried correctly once it's uh, finished. So I'm just going to take some of this washing up liquid and rub it on the outside. Make sure it gets on the surface nicely. Uh, this is the outside, the back panel, which miraculously after all these years is in good condition. So let's just get that here. And then the inside of the case is generally the dirtiest part of it, but as we've seen, uh, the outside is pretty dirty as well. Um, so there is some rust here. Uh, this is where one of the tabs goes. Uh, I think we might be able to get that off uh, just with a scrubber. So we've got some water on here. Let's just get this on here. And uh, <clears throat> this is an interesting piece, which hopefully will come up quite easily. Uh, once we get the hot water on. Talking of hot water, let's get the uh, hot water running. While that's going on, I'm just going to do a bit of scratching with my nail. Fingernail is quite a good tool actually because it uh, it's actually relatively soft, but it can do a little bit of mild scratching. Okay, so let's just let the water run and pour all over the case. Once once we've got a decent amount of water in here, um, we'll actually start scrubbing. Okay, whilst that's filling up, let's just uh, 
have a go at this. Very light abrasion. This is actually inside the case. Very light abrasion on the outside. I am using the scouring side, but I'm doing it lightly. I don't think this piece needs a lot of cleaning, to be honest. There we are. I think that's probably enough. It's a little bit yellowed. Oh, look, there's a bit of dirt here. Just try and get in there. Just get rid of that. Some kind of corrosion or gunk. I don't know what it is. It's, it's a little bit resinous. It's not coming off super easily. It's, I think it's like a liquid, a resin, you know? Maybe food. Doesn't seem to be rusty. There we are. Put that in to soak. Okay, this is the uh, memory pack cover. So let's just give that a clean. From what I could see, this was pretty clean. Doesn't really need much. And if it's a sunny day, I'll quite often take these outside to dry fully in the sun. And uh, one advantage of that is you'll get a little bit of uh, sun brighting as well. It's reasonably sunny today, a bit overcast, but not too bad. Um, okay, so that's that. Now the front. So, yeah, the actual um, label, Amiga label, is still intact with its protective uh, cover, so we'll just be careful not to get rid of that. Okay, let's rinse that off, see what that looks like. Mm hmm Looks like this screw's had a bit of a hard time compared to its uh, sibling over here. It's actually a bit open. I think the wrong screw was used on it. Yeah, that's right. When I opened this up, this had the wrong screw. So we'll have to see if we can fix that. We'll have to see if we can put it back to being uh, the size that it was, because it's actually had a screw put in there. That's too big. Um, yeah, that may not be easily fixable, to be honest. Okay, so I'm not gonna put it in the rack yet, because once I finish cleaning, I like to get all the soap off. And now we're just gonna try and get rid of this brown stuff here, which is very weird. As I said, it's a bit resinous. Wouldn't be surprised if it was some kind of food, maybe. But don't forget, it's actually gone inside the case slightly as well. Okay, it's coming off. Okay, let's give it a quick rinse. And then let's do the same thing for the interior. I'm just gonna rest it on the side here. Hopefully you can see that. I'm just gonna try and get this piece off. Yeah, that's coming off. There's some gone here, you see. This is the broken plastic area here. I'm just gonna try and get rid of... Yeah, it does look really much like the rust here. It's very similar, so yeah, maybe it is rust. Could be. Right. I'm gonna go here. There's like a lot of um, metal filings in this area from where that crazy screw was, which is actually here. Let's try cleaning this as well. Yeah, yeah, it does look like maybe there was some kind of corrosion in this area. Um, I have an Amiga 2000, which is very rusted and uh, yeah, it, um, it really did require a lot of work on it. Uh, so, quick rinse. Now we're going to try and get rid of this bit here. Yeah, this rust is uh, not coming off easily. Don't forget, this is a general clean. Not just to focus in on one thing. Gotta be careful here, I don't want to break this.
Okay, I think that's it in terms of soap and water. The next thing now is to just rinse it off with uh, cold water with no soap, just get the soap off it. Some water on the floor there. Let's put it in the rack. Make sure it doesn't fall over. Uh, there we go. Now this piece. Okay, right, so we've got some water on the floor. Let's get that wiped up. And there we go. Everything good. So we've moved out into the garden and I put the case onto my uh, patio dining table. It's a very sunny day. We've got a bit of a heat wave going on. So I just want to highlight to you here that I've actually managed to get rid of the orange uh, goop on the joystick mouse ports. And I actually use Harpic to do that, which is a cleaning product, which I'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, but it turns out that it's a pretty good rust remover. So yeah, that was really good. I managed to actually get that orange off. Why have we moved outside? Well, it's going to be sunny for the next three days. It's, there's a bit of a heat wave in the UK at this point, and I decided to try and uh, to sun break the case. And the reason for that is that it's very large, and I think I'll struggle really to get it underneath water, which is what I'd have to do in the Uvenator. The Uvenator would give you more controllable results, but I thought as it's sunny, let's try and use the sun. So the case is going to have to be left out like this for pretty much the entire day. And I'm going to do that for three days. And when I do it, I will obviously rotate it around so that the sun catches the different sides of the case because we want to make sure that the lightening process takes place evenly. We don't have a very lightened top and then obviously very yellowed sides. We're just going to have to leave these uh, case pieces here for a few days and hopefully we'll get a good result from this process. Okay, so I've taken the power supply apart. And uh, the reason for that is um, I noticed that there's some pretty bad corrosion in the actual case itself. Um, so let me get the uh, focus good there. So you can see there's, yeah, there's substantial uh, corrosion underneath this spray paint. And if I turn this around, you can see there's absolutely nothing here really. Um, nothing down this end. Uh, the fan itself actually works really well. I'm not going to remove the fan. It's just working really fine. There's a little bit of corrosion here. Um, obviously you can see there. Um, so that looks like that needs to be brushed off and then sprayed. I'll have to mask that area because um, I don't want to spray the fan uh, with silver paint. Um, how am I going to get it off? Well, I've got two wire brushes, uh, a lighter duty one and a very heavy duty one. Um, I actually can't remember what I bought this for, but my God, it's, uh, it's a bit of a beast, right? And um, I'm probably going to have to wear some gloves uh, when I use this because I know that there's quite a high chance of pronging myself with what is effectively a bunch of steel needles and yeah, hurting myself. So I'll have to be careful when I do this. Um, this was actually the main um, alarm for this, which is this, this bracket here, which actually holds the uh, power switch in place. Yeah, very, very corroded, isn't it? Um, and I, I can't quite work out the chronology of this. I, I think this has been sprayed, um, but then, you know, there's lots of rust underneath the spray. So it's possible that it hasn't been sprayed, that this is just the original finish. And this is the, just the corrosion, which hasn't been dealt with. You can see it's really bad. Um, it's what I would call living corrosion. In other words, it's probably gonna carry on eating away at the steel. So really does need to be uh, removed. So I'm going to try using the light duty brush on it first and then the heavy duty brush if that doesn't work. The problem is it's so small, it's probably only the light duty brush that's going to do it. And if that doesn't work fully, um, I'll probably do, I'll get some uh, gel. Uh, Adrian's Digital Basement mentions a product called Navy, Naval Gel, and I don't know if that's available in the UK. 
Um, well, you know, we probably have something similar, but it may not be the same product. Um, and then I may actually immerse this in this and then rub, rub some on the, uh, on the case here in this area. Um, Apart from that, the actual power supply looks really good. We know it works, so there's no real worry with that. I'm just, as I said, I'm concerned about the, um, the continuing corrosion on this case here. Um, it's obviously uh, going to carry on rusting. So we'll put this to one side. Uh, I've got my worksheet here on my dining table, which I, I use traditionally for a lot of the big work. Um, and I'm going to take this outside. As I said, I might put on some safety gloves that I use for gardening, actually, for roses. Um, to stop myself uh, getting pronged with this too much when I give it a brush. It's going to have to be pretty vigorous, you know, to get off this, uh, this rust. And ideally, what you want to get back to is just the raw metal. Um, I do then have some silver paint, which I can then spray it with. So yeah, let's do that now. Let's actually get the rust off this thing. I found my uh, gardening gloves. These are meant to be Kevlar. I doubt if they really are, but anyway. They're meant to be for working with roses to stop yourself getting um, spiked on the thorns. And they did a good job, actually. They stopped me from getting hurt by the, uh, the big wire brush here. Um, and so I used a combination of the big wire brush and this little wire brush. And it turned out the little wire brush was a lot more capable than I thought it would be. The big wire brush was used to get rid of the large amounts of rust, and then the little wire brush was used to try and get rid of the rest of it. Um, I couldn't get rid of all of it, actually. So you can see here that um, I've got rid of the, the main outer rust on it. Um, and the backside actually has a lot more rust removed than the front. And it's down to bare metal. But this does need look like, it looks like I'm going to have to get a product, right? And put it on, paint it on, and then let that eat away at the rust and remove it. Give it a final brushing. Uh, this is the inside of the case. So you can see how much uh, I managed to brush away of the paint and the rust. Uh, but you can see it's eaten into the surface there quite a lot, right? And uh, down here, it's a bit clearer now how bad it was actually underneath the paint. Um, this area here is actually worth looking at because this is actually where uh, this comes out of the bottom of the case and it's the tab um, on the bottom of the case that caused a lot of discoloration and rusting. So this tab um, had a lot of corrosion on it. And you can actually see where the metal's darker around there where it's actually eaten into the metal. So that area needs to be um, applied with the, the stuff as well. Um, I brushed uh, this area here. Uh, but it didn't really get it off much. It looks like it's eaten into the surface more than anything. So again, an application of that product. So um, on to Amazon I go. Uh, we'll get that product ordered. And once that arrives, I'll probably give this a little bit more of a brush uh, once I've got a bit more energy. And then we'll apply the product and see what that does. So I have um, managed to get rid of the rust on the power supply. And uh, that was an interesting uh, process. Um, well, quite laborious, really. Uh, you can see I've removed it on the edge here and uh, inside here. This was the main area where the rust was. Um, and there was quite a bit outside here as well. Um, it doesn't look great, the metal, but um, the rust has actually been removed from it. So I used two products to do that. I used, um, and this was an experiment actually, I used a, a UK uh, cleaning product called Harpic. And I realized that it said on the label that it didn't use bleach. And if it didn't use bleach, I was thinking, what is the agent that's actually used to um, do its thing? And it, it's used against lime scale, which is an alkali as far as I understand it. So basically, I thought that it might be some kind of acid. And um, I gave it a try uh, on this piece here, which is uh, the piece that holds on the uh, power switch. And um, I realized that uh, it worked. Um, it actually dissolves rust. On the same day that I tried this, I also ordered some uh, Genolite rust remover, which is um, a, a pink uh, gel, and it does a very similar uh, thing as the Harpic, actually. Uh, the Harpic is much more runny. It's meant for cleaning toilets, um, so it's actually much more fluid. But it's interesting that they do pretty much the same thing. Uh, the Harpic removed the, the rust pretty much as quickly as the uh, Genolite did. So that might be quite a good tip. Uh, this Genolite was, I think, £12 for this size of bottle. And Harpic is probably just uh, one or two pounds for that size of bottle. Um, and as long as you don't need the gloopiness of the uh, Genolite, then Harpic uh, will probably do the job for you. You need to be careful. It's very acidic. It actually, you could feel it burning my fingers when I got my fingers in it. Um, maybe wear gloves, um, but I just made sure that I, I kept it on my fingers for a very short time and then washed it off. Um, I've masked 
uh, the fan, and that's mainly to stop the paint getting into the workings. Um, the previous person didn't do that, and there was a little bit of silver on the fan, but that's not a big issue. It still works. Um, but I just want to make sure that it doesn't accumulate any paint in the fan, to and that could obviously stop it running correctly. Um, we're ready to go. So um, I'm going to get set up in my garden because I like to spray paint out there. Um, I'm going to use this product here, which is um, Paint Factory High Temperature Paint, up to 600 degrees apparently, Celsius. And it's a silver matte. And I've used this on some cooker uh, knobs and it produces a matte silver, which is what we actually have here. And I'm probably going to try and spray the entire thing to give it a, an even coat. The only thing that's worrying is it looks like uh, this was the original undercoat and then there's a spray on top and it, it's flaking off. So I'm not sure if that's going to actually um, adhere well. It may actually flake off. Um, but I'm going to probably use a couple of coats of silver. Um, oh yeah, there was a little piece of rust here as well actually. Um, and I get I used the Genolite for that rather than the Harpic because it's much more uh, gloopy. Because um, I didn't want it going inside that box. Uh, the box is just a container for the cattle lead plug. And uh, I've actually, it comes through here and I've put some tape on top of the uh, cables just to stop them getting sprayed. So yeah, let's decamp to my garden and get my little spray setup going and uh, we'll get this sprayed. Right then, so it's a very warm day here today. We're having a bit of a heat wave in the UK. So I'm just going to get straight in here. Get this shaken up quite nicely. And I'm going to try and hold this cable out of the way when I'm spraying. Okay, let's do the side first. Well, that goes on well. Small amounts. Well, yeah. you can see the metallic spray spraying around actually. Yeah, nice stuff. Quite sparkly. Okay, we have to wait for a second for that to dry. And um, I'm just going to leave it to dry for a bit. I've sprayed quite a lot of paint on there. So I'm going to back, go back indoors and just leave it there to dry out in the sun for a short while, five minutes. Come back and we'll give it another coat. Okay, and I return to do a bit more spraying. It's been out here for about five minutes now. And uh, Let's turn her over. Let's just give the other side a go. Okay, I think that'll do. Let's leave that to dry. Okay, I've left I've left that to dry for um, another five minutes. I'm going to take this inside now, let it carry on drying there for a little bit, and then we'll actually reassemble this, take off the masking tape and so on. Um, so yeah, I'll see you back inside. Right then, so we have sprayed the case. I gave the um, power supply logic board a little bit of um, a clean, although to be honest, I'm not going to disassemble it to get right in there, but there was a little bit of yellowing here and I just got that off. I use some IPA to clean the switch. A um, little bit stubborn. It's not super clean, but you know, it looks okay now. It's a lot less, less dirty than it was. We've got the case here, and there's a little uh, bracket here for the switch. So I've got to remember how to put that uh, together. I've got a photograph of how this all plugs together, but I'll just wing it for now. 
um, how it all plugs in. Let's take the tape off. Uh, masking tape. That was just put in there to protect some wires. There we go. So we have made sure that we didn't get any more paint on the fan. There's actually some paint on it already from a previous spray job by looks of it. Um, but at least I made sure I didn't put any more on there. Um, and I'm just gonna take off. Ah, there we are. That looks pretty good, right? There's the, uh, the kettle lead uh, socket. So that's looking okay. And we've managed to cover this area here where there was some corrosion. So let's put it back together. And I've just plugged in the, uh, the cable that goes from the kettle lead to the actual uh, power board itself. And now I've noticed that there seems to be an extra mounting bracket, which seems to be quite strange. And next to it, there's a green wire. Um, so then I realized that this green wire is actually an earth lead and should be screwed to one of those mounting holes. So I've actually unclipped that earth lead that was actually held in an unusable position with a cable tie. And now I'm trying to find a screw that could actually be used to put that back into position. I've only got five screws, which um, should hold down the power board. And then the other two screws basically uh, hold down the power supply to the um, inside the case. So yeah, lots of struggling around until... And there's just one left there. So I'm gonna just try and use one of these screws, maybe this one, but I have a feeling it's gonna be the wrong size. I don't know, actually this one's perfect. Brilliant. Three screws. So we've done quite a lot in this video, right? Um, we've uh, renovated the power supply, which had a, a big uh, problem with corrosion. We've cleaned the case, we've repaired the case, and I'm gonna show that to you in a second what I've done. Um, the logic board itself didn't really have any problems. It looks like it's been recapped because I can see dots on the capacitors, which indicates that people have checked them um, and then either replaced them or left them in situ. None of them are bulging. I don't see any, any electrolytics on the, um, on the logic board, so I think that's fine. I'm not gonna try and repair something that's actually okay. So, Let's have a quick look at the, uh, the repair. There's a couple of areas I'd like to show you. Um, so this standoff um, has a partner here. Um, I'll put them together so you can see it. Um, so this standoff here was badly broken. The other standoffs, which are very similar, um, have a, a reasonably sized hole in the middle, but this one has a, had a much bigger hole. And that's because this standoff here with a metal top actually had a screw stuck in it, which had broken off. God knows how much strength somebody had had to use to do that, right? But um, yeah, that was a problem. So because that metal screw had broken off, the other screw was going down the side of it and breaking out the side, it broke out the side here. And when it was doing that, it was causing damage to the standoff here, so this hole became huge. I filled this with milliput, I filled this with milliput. And the thing about milliput is that when you use water on it, when it's uh, in its uh, hasn't dried, you can actually water it down, um, which is really cool because then you can wipe it off with a cloth. Um, so that's what I did. And then I basically stuffed it in there as well, left it to dry. Once it was hard, I then got a drill, which was the right size for that particular uh, screw, drilled through here, made sure the screw will actually go in. So I think it's actually one of these. Uh, let me show you that. So that does actually fit in there. Um, and then, I uh, did the same here as well, made sure that the screw would actually screw in here. I screwed it all the way in. Um, so that's a fix. And the case, apart from that, is now nice and clean, ready to go back together. So on this side of the case, um, in this corner, there was a really bad break. Um, we looked at that earlier. And what I've done is I've glued it underneath using a product called Goop, uh, which is available in the UK, and it's a kind of automotive glue. It doesn't melt plastic, um, but it's actually quite, um, it's like a resin when it dries, so it's quite strong. Um, and I've used that inside and I used the bare minimum that I could. I, I put it in the crack on, on this side. And then on this side, I filled the crack with milliput. I watered it down. 
Uh, I then smoothed it into the cracks. And then what I did was waited for that to dry, took off any excess with a scalpel. And then it was still smeared over this area. Um, so what I did was I used some 80 grit sandpaper to take off uh, some quite big excess in this area. Then I went to a 400, which is quite a fine sandpaper. And, uh, and then I went to a, a, an 800 and the result is actually um, very smooth. It's very visible, I know that, it's white. Um, so if I wanted to make this invisible, uh, I would have to get some modeling paint, the kind of thing that you would use with you know, toy soldiers, um, some kind of acrylic, and then very carefully mix that up and then try and actually color match it. Um, but I'm okay with it for now. Um, that's something I might do in the future. So in the remainder of this section, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this all back together. And uh, it's a bit of a jigsaw puzzle. Um, so you may see some toing and froing in the video. We're not gonna go at normal speed because um, basically it's a lot of work. It's gonna take a while. So we're gonna go into a montage and uh, you can see me trying to put this all back together. So uh, let's do that now. Just gonna put my glasses on because uh, I'll need them for this close up work. Um, and uh, I'll see you in a few minutes once we've put this all together. And it's a day later and we have the final result. And I've got to say, uh, <laughs> really brought a smile to my face when I put it all together here. Um, I've cleaned the case um, with aeroplane uh, plastic uh, protectant. Uh, it's a product which has been um, uh, featured on uh, Adrian's Digital Basement. Um, and it's basically a UV protector and it also gives the plastic a bit of a, a nice sheen. I think um, Retro Man Cave has also shown the same product as well. And it does work quite well. Um, and yeah, it just makes the plastic look a, a little bit new again. The uh, keyboard, I mean, what can I say? The, the Uvenator has done, done a fantastic job. If anything, it's maybe a little bit too good. Um, you can see that the case here is a little bit more uh, beige than uh, the keyboard. I've looked at reference photographs of the Amiga uh, 1000 back in the day, and it's very difficult to tell what's the correct color 
Is it a gray white or is it more of a beige? Um, possibly we could have actually retrobrighted the, uh, the case a little bit more, or maybe I over retrobrighted the keyboard. All I know is the keyboard on its own looks fantastic. Uh, if this wasn't the color scheme for it in the first place, uh, maybe it should have been because I think it looks really great. The logo did take a bit of a hit, unfortunately. So uh, when this was all finished, I peeled off the plastic and uh, I had a look at the logo and it's lost some of its orange uh, and some of its yellow. And uh, there's a beige uh, color around it, which I thought was the adhesive, but it doesn't seem to be. Um, so I think if I was gonna make this look better, I would peel off this plastic, which I thought would protect it. And I would actually hand paint uh, that logo back in. The um, keyboard lead, very difficult to clean. I use soapy water on it. I've used alcohol. Uh, it never really looks that clean. It might be nice actually to just get a new uh, one of these leads, um, which might be a possibility. It's a standard, I think, RJ45 jack. Um, I'm not sure though if it's, if it's a standard wiring. Uh, that's the issue. So yeah, I'd have to do a bit of research into that and see if that's a possibility of replacing it, but it's fine. Um, what can we do in the future with it? Um, I've mentioned the Barcero. Uh, that's something I would like to get. It fits in here and it does a number of things, but the main thing it does is it gets rid of the, uh, the need for the kickstart uh, disks, and then it enables a hard disk uh, using an SD card on the Passero. So those two things together would be amazing to make this machine much more capable. It also gives it eight meg of fast RAM. Um, and yeah, that would make it um, much more capable as well. I need to dig out my Amiga mouse. Uh, I think it's living with my Amiga 500, um, or it might be with my Amiga 4000, I'm not quite sure. Uh, and one other thing, of course, is does it still work? Well, I've got it plugged into the transformer. I can hear a fan noise. Nothing yet. Uh-huh, white. And then hopefully, <sighs> yeah. So there we are, kickstart please. Um, and at that point, the, uh, the disk drive goes into its little me, 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 me clicking noise. So yeah, um, I'm, I'm ecstatic. It's been uh, close to, I think, something like 35 years since I first saw one of these. And obviously I couldn't have it uh, because in those days, I think it was the equivalent of about three and a half thousand pounds today. Um, and for a teenager, that's just way out of my budget. Um, but here it is. Um, I always thought it was a great looking machine. I would definitely like to get the disk drive that goes with it, uh, the 1010, I think it is, which actually is a, a very um, clear echoing of this uh, design motif that you see here. Um, it's basically this with uh, rounded corners on, on both sides. Um, I, I think I will try and get one of those. I'll try and get the Barcero. Um, that's obviously gonna be in a future video. Uh, there is another video actually where we dive into uh, retrobrighting the keyboard in detail. Um, so that's something definitely worth watching. Um, it was going to originally be part of this video, but this video is already quite long. So yeah, I thought it made more sense to actually um, dedicate an entire video to the, the whitening process. Um, I, yeah, very, very happy. So uh, you know the score. If you can, please click on the like button to let other people know that you like this video and get the word out about the channel. Also subscribe if you can, please. Um, and also if you've got some time and you really enjoyed this video, please tell your friends about it because word of mouth is also important as well as uh, YouTube. Uh, publicizing your video to other people. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. It was a lot of work to put it together. Um, I've never actually done a video like this before where you have to do so many different uh, things on a, on a machine. Um, and I hope to do a lot more of these in the future. I have a really great one lined up for an Amiga 4000, uh, which again is one of my grail machines in that I actually had one uh, for a very short amount of time really, um, back in the 90s. And unfortunately I had to sell it because of my career. Um, I, I had to sell it to get a PC to learn how to use software. So uh, that'll be a great video. Um, anyway, for now, that's it. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.